good to go. What is up, you guys? It is Parker here with Deco Exchange. Y'all, before we get started, I just wanted to say uh, a big shout out and a big thank you to the Michaels management team, as well as our IT support team here in the background. Uh, I think we had a really successful night last night, um, and we have another great artist tonight. We have Christy Hawkins. Uh, she's going to teach you guys how to paint. She is with uh, The Social Easel. You can check her out on Facebook and YouTube and all those things. Um, before we get started, you guys, there was a lot of interest in uh, the Michaels Pro. Um, it is a new bulk buying option at Michaels. Y'all, they have thousands of items that are available for bulk discounts and bulk purchasing. If you guys go to michaels.com slash Michaels Pro, you can read all about it there and check out this new system that they just launched recently. Y'all, I'm going to turn it over to Christy. Uh, I am not the painter. I'm going to let Christy <laughs> take over and uh, you're going to get crafty tonight, y'all. <laughs> All right. So um, just a quick intro for those of you that don't know me. My name is Christy Hawkins and I'm the owner of The Social Easel. And I have been teaching women how, women and kids, um, how to paint for the past seven years. Um, and now I teach 100% online, which means I get to be home with my kids a whole lot more. I've got three daughters and a husband and um, teaching virtually has given me the ability to completely change our life and lifestyle. So as I'm painting tonight, if you guys have questions about the business side of things um, or the painting side of things, be sure to put those in the Q&A. Um, that's the easiest way for us to see them. They will get lost in the shuffle in chat. Um, so put them in the Q&A if you have a specific question for me. Um, I am just grabbing a few more um, paint colors here. So what we're gonna paint tonight is, um, this is my buffalo plaid. I figured everyone's in the mood for fall. Pumpkins, we're getting close, right? I mean, it's still like 100 degrees here, but I'm ready for fall. So we're doing the buffalo plaid, and I'm gonna show you a really easy technique for this that you can add to any painting. It's so, so simple, so much easier than what you think it is. And then I'm gonna show you how to do these little pumpkins. And of course I made mine teal, it's my favorite color. Um, hold that a little closer for you guys. Um, you do not have to do them that color. Um, any oranges, um, neutral tones, whatever you want your pumpkins to look like. Um, but I will go over the colors that I used tonight with you. Um, so the very first thing we are gonna do, I'm gonna scoot this over just a little bit as I knock my paint over. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick outline on here. I'm using a 14 by 14 canvas, by the way. You can get these in a value pack at Michael's. Um, and I love their value packs because they come in so many different sizes. And as an artist and an art teacher, especially when I was doing local paint nights, it's fun to not always just paint on 16 by 20s. That's the standard size, um, but they have a lot of options for you in the bulk pack now. So it makes it super affordable for you as a business owner if you're teaching um, paint parties. So the first thing we're gonna do is just kinda get our base outline of our pumpkins on here, and then I'm gonna show you how to do the buffalo plaid. I'm just gonna jump over to Q&A really quick just to see. Um, my company name is The Social Easel, so if you missed that, and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of navy. So I've got a little bit of navy on my brush and a little bit of that aqua color. And we're just gonna start by just doing one little brush stroke here. Let me know if y'all can see. Okay, if I need to hold it up while I'm painting, I can. Um, it obviously, it makes it a little easier when it's on my easel. So we're just starting with like a little curve here and then one over like this. So, so think of it, it on, you can see it on the easel. Okay, you can, okay. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna put it back then because that'll be easier for you guys. So think of it kind of like a heart. That's really all, all you're doing. Then we can kind of round out the edges. This is very, very forgiving. So this stage of your painting, and when you're working with acrylic paint, the first thing I want people to understand is you can cover up anything, okay? If you make a mistake in your painting, the secret tip is to let it dry 
and then you can paint right over top of it and you'll never know what happened. So right here, as I'm doing this, if I change my mind and I want that to angle up a little bit more, I'll just change that. This is all gonna be blended in and be the color of the pumpkin down here. Um, so you can kind of fudge around on your lines a little bit and it's okay. I'm gonna do the same thing here. This one's gonna be our little mini one in the corner. So we've got our basic shapes down of our pumpkins. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse. Damon, do I have any questions that are popping up? So I've got a few for you, Chrissy. Yeah. Um, so what brush are you using? And what oh, tech setup you. are you using? <laughs> okay, so, um, and I was telling them this before we got on here. So when I started my business seven years ago and started doing paint nights, it started out with just a small group, 10 ladies. They were my guinea pigs. And I thought, if I, by the way, I have been an artist my entire life, um, but I had never taught people step-by-step step how to paint my paintings. Um, so I used my friends as guinea pigs and I went to Michael's um, and I got the value packs of stuff. So this is what I would recommend. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's the Artist Loft. Um, they're white synthetic. It's a 10 piece brush set. This is what I built my business off of. Um, so that is the brush that I'm using tonight. Right now I'm using the large flat. There are 10 in there and it's a great starter kit for everyone um, getting started painting. I'm going to be using a large flat. I'm going to be using one of the angled brushes and then I have two different size rounds. So I'm using four paint brushes for this particular painting. And then um, you asked about the tech setup. Is that right? I believe. Um, so all I'm using, yeah, um, I'm just using my iPhone right now to record with you guys. So if you're intimidated and you're thinking like, you know, that all sounds great, grand and wonderful, but I'm not techie and I can't do that. Guess what? I wasn't techie either. I'm still not. <laughs> um, this is my phone and I have a ring light stand. So there's a big light around this so that there's good lighting. Um, and that's what I'm recording this with, with you guys. And then over here, which this was a good question because I forgot to hit record on this. I have another camera set up and I'm going, that's another iPhone, okay? And I'm going to that and I just went to the time-lapse button and I have this angled to videotape the painting I'm doing tonight. So later I can share that with my audience and show them a really sped up version of the painting. So that's just a fun little thing that you can do. Um, you don't have to, um, but yeah, basic setup is just, um, just an iPhone and a stand and good internet. <laughs> so for the Buffalo plaid, this is where we're going to start. I've got just gray paint and I'm using all of Michael's craft smart. You can get little two ounce bottles. They have them in tons of great colors. Um, but this is just gray, just to make it easy. You could obviously mix your own with black and white, but we're trying to keep it simple. So I'm just got that loaded with plenty of paint and I'm just gonna come straight down back and forth, vertical brush strokes. So here's a tip when you are painting. A lot of people, you know, through the years when I've taught, I look out and they're like, why don't my brush strokes look like yours? Like I'm watching you, I'm doing your step and mine doesn't look like that. And I'll come over and I look and they have barely any paint on their brush. Like this is, you know, decent amount. And you see how much paint I have on there. They would have just a little bit on the tip of their brush. And so when they would go to make their brush strokes, it'd be streaky and it wouldn't make a solid brush stroke. So number one tip, don't be scared of your paint. It's cheap. <laughs> These are not expensive artist grade level paints that cost a fortune. So don't be scared to use your paint. It's gonna make your life much, much easier. So I am just eyeballing this. We're just gonna make vertical stripes all the way across here. If you look at my original, this is kind of wonky. These are not perfect straight lines and I prefer them that way. I think it adds character to the painting and we're not trying to be perfect. I want perfectionism to go out the door when you're painting and I want you to have fun in the creative process. So 
we have a question. Someone would like to paint their pumpkins um, more of a pink color instead of a blue. What dark color would you recommend that they start with? Um, a pink. Let me see. Deco Art um, has a lot of good pinks. I'm trying to see if I have any. I have these kind of categorized by color back here. Um, and I'm not sure every Michael store has a different, you know, selection of uh, the deco art paints, but um, peony pink, dragon fruit, watermelon slice, um, and then just their basics um, the, in the craft smart, like they have a ton of different shades of pink that you can choose from too. So I tell all of my students, like when I, t I have two memberships that I teach painting and online. Um, one where they get three paintings per month with me and then one um, like this truck behind here. Um, it's called the painting of the month club where they get one, um, one painting a month with me. They always get a color list for each painting that I teach so they can reference those but I really, really try to encourage my students to not focus so much on exactly what I'm using but making it your own and just having, having fun with it. And do you base coat your canvas? I do not. So I'm all about quick and easy, especially if you're going to teach paint parties. Um, these are just, you know, student grade, bulk pack. They do not, you don't have to spend a lot of money on your canvases to make beautiful art. Um, I don't prep them. And in fact, we're even cheating a little bit on this one. And that buffalo plaid, I'm not going to actually paint that white. I'm just going to leave it, the, the canvas. Um, so it's going to be, like I said, super simple. <laughs> so we've got all of our vertical stripes. Now I need to make some horizontal ones. This canvas is obviously slightly bigger. I did this one on a 12 by 12. So we may have a few more lines here, but this is why I like this. This is like a three quarter inch flat brush that comes in that value pack. And I'm using that to be my guide for the width of my lines. So I'm just See, I'm just dragging back and forth. And again, we're not worried about this being perfect at all. If it's a little bit wider in some areas, I'm not gonna let that bother me. We're just making a little grid here. Now every once in a while, <laughs> you guys are going to see this. I'm standing off to the side and I just noticed my line's going way down. So every once in a while, I may have to cut in front of you just a little bit so my painting's not too awful wonky. We're going to go a little bit wider on that to straighten that out. So hopefully you guys think this is pretty easy so far. Nothing too difficult. Now you can see right now I'm covering up my lines on the pumpkins. I'm not worried about that. I can still see where they are and look how much shading I'm going to be adding up here. So I know that's not going to matter that I'm doing that. Christy, I'm just going to add really quick um, for you guys that are listening and watching. Uh, we're going to talk a little more business after the painting is over. So I see a few people asking business questions and that's great. And we're going to get to them. Um, but we're going to jump on that after she's done with the, the art. Okay, awesome. Um, I believe someone was asking, do I paint the edges of the canvas or just the front? When I am doing it like for a paint night or for to hang in my home, I paint the sides of the painting as well. Um, for tonight, there's no, I mean, it's the same thing. So I'm not bothering painting the sides for you guys this evening. But normally, yes, I would go ahead and paint all sides of the canvas. What I like to do is like, whatever is on the front, I just pull over to the side. And some people like to do um, completely different things. Um, you could do black and white stripes on the side of your canvas. That would be cute. You could paint it a solid color. So there's a lot of things you can do with it. But if you make the, um, the sides of your canvas painted, like I'll just, hopefully I actually finished it on this one. Well, we'll use this one, for example. I've got my bird's nest hanging here. So I've painted the signs and put that rustic edge all the way around them. And so it's ready to go straight on my wall. I don't need a frame for it. If you want a frame, that's great. But 
I'm just trying to encourage people to get to painting and get their art on the wall. Not everything has to be framed. Um, it's just ready for you to go. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, here's the trick to the buffalo plaid. This is the super simple part. All we're gonna do to make that buffalo plaid is paint black squares where the two gray lines intersect. That's it. And from a distance, it looks like regular buffalo plaid. There are a lot more complicated ways that you can paint this. Um, but like I said, this is simple. This painting's cute, right? And all it was was just black where all of these intersect. Now, if you want it to be super stark black, you could let this dry completely or even blow dry it. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and do black. I can always let it dry. And then if it mixed a little bit of gray in it and I didn't like the way it looked, I could always go back to it. So like I said, when you're working with acrylic paint, that's one of the you know, greatest um, things about it, in my opinion, is that it's so forgiving. You can always go back and edit. Happy little accidents, right? Do we have any Bob Ross fans out there? Me. <laughs> so Parker actually has the Bob, Ross, uh, the Bob Ross paint kit and the wig. Oh, I've got the wig. I've worn the wig. <laughs> so Parker, are we painting now? I don't think you or Damon, I've gotten either one of you to paint yet. No, I paint like a six month old. I was going <laughs> to say two year old, but that's like too much credit. We're going to change that. See, they think they can't paint, but I can teach anyone how to paint. So if you weren't doing this in a class, Christy, would you paint the white part white of the Buffalo Shack? For this particular painting, I wouldn't. I would actually give them the option. If they wanted white paint instead of blank canvas, I would have them, that's the very first thing they would do when they sat down in the class, paint the whole thing white, very, very thin coat, because in a paint class, it's all about time. Like you only have so much time. I built my business um, doing uh, traveling paint parties. So I did not have a brick and mortar. I rotated around to restaurants and made partnerships with restaurants and it is a great atmosphere for painting. The women love it because they're getting to come and have appetizers and drinks. The restaurant loves it because they're getting money from the drink sales. And I love it because it supported my family <laughs> and it built my business. And I was doing these two to three nights a week with 40 to 45 people in my classes um, and they were selling out. And then about two years ago, I started and moved it all online. But um, online does give you the flexibility to play around a little bit more because you're not under a time constraint. But yes, if you were at a paint night um, and you know restaurants close at a certain time, you gotta kind of keep things going. Um, I would not recommend painting it white unless they wanted to. And then I'd have them do it at the beginning very quickly in a very thin coat. So hopefully you guys can see, this is quick and easy, just kind of filling in where they meet. And I'm gonna show you, a lot of times it's deceiving. People look at the paintings from afar and they look like really perfect, clean lines. So you can see up close how messy that is, but it just adds to the character of it. So just trying to kind of break you guys away from being too serious with your paintings. Paint like you're a kid and you're just excited to have paint on your brush. Do you have any tips or tricks for keeping, to keep your paint from drying before you're done using it? Like if you blend colors? Um, it really depends on how much um, you're, you know you're gonna use that color. In a normal paint class, like, or a paint session with me, a standard one and a half to two hours, that paint is not going to dry unless you just have a very, very tiny amount there. So when I taught my paint parties, I would, at the beginning of the class, we would prep everyone's paint plate for them. So they would sit down at their seat. These were the easels they painted on. And me and, you know, my assistants would come around and hand them their paint plate and they would have it. And that was what we did. And that, it was still fine two hours later. 
Um, because acrylics dry so fast on canvas, you really shouldn't have to, you know, come back to them. Um, if you know you're going to want to, um, when I was in art school, we used to get, which no one even has anymore, we'd do like baby food jars. I was going to say film containers. That's what we used to mix our paints in. So we would get old film containers and that's what we would mix our paints in and then seal it and then no air could get to it if you mixed your own color. Which is really fun, by the way. I love color mixing. Do you recommend these same methods on wood? I do. So you can see this one behind you. I'm not sure if you can see what that um, is on. So about three years ago in my paint party business, I decided I wanted to try something different. My husband had built me these pallet boards to do um, words and stuff on, you know, like you cut with a silhouette or a cricket to do signs. And I had an extra one laying in the basement and I was like, I wonder what it would look like if I painted on it, like a painting on the pallet board. And so this was one of the first ones that I did. This is actually our painting of the month painting this month, but I love painting on wood and I use the exact same techniques. Um, when you do paint on wood, you'll see that it actually dries faster on wood. Um, so you, you kind of learn the difference of painting on canvas versus wood, how much paint you want to use, but it's actually my favorite thing to paint on. I prefer painting on pallet board um, more than I like painting on canvas, but I use all the same materials. So when you're painting, like when you paint the sides, do you paint them while you're painting or at the end? Um, it depends on what I'm painting. Like on this one back here with the trees, I would just go ahead and those orange colors, I would just carry them over to the sides as I was doing it. Um, and then, you know, maybe something a little bit more like this. I could just really quickly come over here and just add the black. I really don't have a strict method of like which way I prefer. It's kind of like whatever happens. <laughs> Someone wants to know what art school you went to. Um, well, I actually went to two. So I started out at University of Arkansas um, in their art program. And then I met my husband and he was um, a year older than me and he graduated and was ready to move to Dallas to um, become a chiropractor. So I left school and we moved to Dallas. I didn't paint like professionally um, classes, anything like that for, I don't know, I think um, almost 12, 13 years. And then after I had my three children, I had the crazy idea that it would be a good time for me to go back to college and get my degree. So I went back to school um, at MSU here in Springfield, Missouri and um, was in the graphic design program. Because at the time, this is what I want you guys to think about. I had told myself I could never get paid to be a painter. Like that was my dream. Like since I was five years old, I just wanted to paint. I just wanted to be a painter. And I never thought that was possible. And I thought the only way I'm ever gonna make money at art is to go into graphic design, which I love graphic design too. It's fun, but it's not painting. So I went back to graphic design school. Um, and I was all the way, I only had one year left. And then I started my paint party business on the side and it took off like crazy. And I was making, instead of going into debt in college, I was making money for our family. And I was like, but this is like, this was my dream. This was my dream was to teach people how to paint. And I was getting to do it. And we had to make that hard decision of like, do I quit school and not get my degree and put all my eggs in one basket with the paint party business? or do I finish? Because I couldn't do both. I was um, completely burnt out. Again, three kids, a husband, um, a paint party business, and going to school full-time in graphic design, which is a super intense program. Um, and ultimately, we decided to end my um, schooling. So no, I don't have a degree in art. Um, I just have years and years of experience in it. And we decided to throw all the eggs into this paint party basket. And now here I am 
seven years later and now we have from paint parties to having an online business to allow me the freedom to be with my family, which was exactly what I had hoped for. So that's a long answer to that question, but that's where I went to school. Where do you get inspiration for your painting subjects? I get them from everywhere. So walking around Michaels, going to Hobby Lobby, going to Kirkland's, to Walmart, anywhere you see displays. Photos, like, I mean, I take pictures of everything. Um, everything I see in nature. I love flowers. I love painting flowers. Um, I love old trucks. So, you know, like whatever, um, you know, whatever I'm feeling. And then I also look, um, use Pinterest as a guide. Um, I look for things that are trending and that are popular. But here's the thing I do want you to realize for those of you starting out or if you're thinking about doing a paint party business or anything like that. Um, number one, you can't take things from Pinterest and have them at your paint parties, in case you didn't know that, um, because that's somebody else's art um, and you don't have rights to it. So um, you can get inspiration from those paintings, but here's what I recommend to my students. Inside my membership, I teach them how start to learn how to create your own art, be inspired, but don't copy. That's kind of what we say. So take a subject matter, like let's use an owl as an example. Look up all these cute owls on uh, Pinterest or Etsy, wherever. And then, you know, save all those images and then open your pages or Microsoft Word, whatever you use. Put all those images on there, put them all on one page. Um, find some actual photographs too. So photographs, paintings, different things. And then I have them look at all the different things and take certain things that they like about each little painting, maybe the composition of it, maybe where the owl is sitting, the owl's on a branch over here and this other one, it's big and it's fluffy over here. Whatever it is that you like, look at the things you like out of each one and then you start creating your own version. And you do that by doing little sketches. I call them little thumbnails. Um, and I just use my sketchbook and I just draw a bunch of little squares or rectangles depending on what um, canvas I'm using. And um, I just sketch those out until I kind of come up with my own idea. So that's my best advice for creating your own, being inspired um, without copying, um, you know, things that you find, kind of coming up with your own ideas. Hey, Christy. Yes. Uh, two things. One, um, you're halfway through, so you've got 30 minutes. The other okay. thing is um, you just like filled in the, the pumpkin, but like you were blending paint together. Like what was happening there? <laughs> okay. So um, yes, I was chatting and not telling you guys what I'm no, doing. No, it's okay. I'm genuinely curious. So what I'm doing right now, I started with the darker colors around the edges. And again, I mean, these are my funky pumpkins with my crazy colors. So I'm using like navy blue. Um, this is robin's egg blue. I will tell you, these are my little secret favorite colors from Michaels. This is in a million of my paintings. Robin, robin, robin's egg blue, if I can tell. And then ocean breeze. That's what this truck is. Um, love those colors. So navy blue. I did a little of the ocean breeze. And here's the thing when you're blending. And that's all I'm doing in this pumpkin right now is just blending these colors, just playing with it. You just want to keep moving. Like I said, acrylic paint dries really fast. So you want to make sure whatever colors you're playing with and blending with, I have both of those colors I just mentioned on my brush at the same time. And I'm just going to keep blending them. And then if I want a little bit more white in the middle, you want things to stay wet while you're blending because if it starts drying and it's really, really super dry and then you go over it, it's going to be a very, very stark difference. Okay. So I'm going to fill in, let's prop this guy up here. I'm going to fill this little pumpkin in with white. Now it still has my other colors and my brush. And see like how I just changed the shape of that. I covered up some of that black and that will be completely covered by the time I'm done adding my detail and everything. You're not even going to be able to tell that there was black behind it. So give yourself some grace. 
when you're painting um, and try not to get too hyper focused on one area. If you make a little mistake, keep painting, come back to it. Most of the time, you're not even going to remember where that mistake was and it's not even going to bother you in the end. So I'm doing white here and I'm still using my large flat for this. So we've kind of got our pumpkin colors on there. So the next thing we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and stick that in water and I'm going to grab, I don't have my brown on here yet. I'm going to grab some brown paint and I have a burnt umber and we're going to start adding the lines into the pumpkins. This is really going to be what gives it the shape. So we're going to start on the outer edges and then we're going to come in to there and then it's kind of like a leaf shape in the middle. So let me grab some of that paint really quick. Um, Joan said, can you use medium to keep the paints wet? You can. Um, I just, I just don't like the way that I paint. I never have to. Um, you can also use mediums to make them thicker. Like if you want really, really thick paint instead of thin crafts paint, you can take any of these colors. And then this is also from Michaels. Um, they're artist loft. You can do gloss gel medium or you can do matte depending on what you want and all you do is just add that to any craft paint that you have and it's instantly thicker so it doesn't change the color of it or anything like that but it gives you really really thick paint and that does stay wet a little bit longer so we have some questions that are more for about the wood they're wondering like if you prep the wood first because you don't have to prep the canvas but do you have to prep the wood I do not. Um, my husband cuts them and builds them for me and I go straight to painting them. So it's just bare wood on that. Um, Does he sand them? No. <laughs> like we are like, we're trying to like make it as simple and seamless as possible. So we don't, I mean, they're smooth enough. These are just like one by fours and one by threes. Um, furring strips um, is what you call them. And honestly, the, the fronts and the backs of them are fine. The only part we ever sand is like that top edge where it gets rough where he had to actually saw the pieces. So right now I'm just taking some of my burnt umber and this is like a number two, uh, number four. So this is again in that Michaels crafts or um, paint set. That's a number four round. And I'm just doing a quick outline around both pumpkins. But what I want you to notice while I'm doing this is that I am not pushing down very hard. So I just wanna show you this little tip really quick. This is my mixed media pad, which I highly recommend. This is like a sketchbook for painters. So I've got plenty of paint on my brush, right? And if I push down lightly, I get these nice skinny lines. See how skinny those are? With the same brush, if I'm heavy handed or if I push down too hard, I get these big brush strokes. So it is all about the pressure that you're putting on your brush to the canvas when you're applying this paint. So if you want these thinner lines like I'm doing, I am just barely dragging the tips across the canvas when I'm doing that. So we're gonna come in and I'm gonna repeat this kind of curve. And I'm purposely, I'm gonna hold this up again because I just like you guys to see close. I'm purposely letting it kind of feather out there. These don't need to be hard concrete lines, but let's say you do. Let's say you mess up and you do a big thick line. I'm just gonna make this really thick on purpose just to kind of show you guys. All right, so what if you do that and you're upset and you're mad that you made it that way? Because we're shading in this pumpkin, I'm gonna go straight into paint and I'm just gonna blend it. Now you could also let it dry, but I'm just taking a little bit of my white and that robin's egg blue that I love and I'm just gonna blend it in and we're just going to add a little of that, that color in there. And then when that dries, I can come back and add more turquoise to it if I want to. 
So everything you do, you can always go back and edit. Now we're doing this, the middle shape is kind of the most important part. And it's kind of like a leaf shape. So I'm kind of curving out and back down and you're not gonna see the entire thing. And then we'll do the same thing down here. Got my paints in the way here. So this is a little fat squatty pumpkin down here. Um, Rhonda said, what did I say to make the paint thicker? It's a gel medium is what that's called. So we wanna add our stems in, right? So I have mine kind of smaller at the bottom. I'm gonna pull one line out like this. I'm making a big letter V. That's all that is. Big letter V, close it in. I'm gonna get a little bit of black with my burnt umber because I just want it a little bit darker. I love color mixing, like I said, very rarely do I use a color straight out of the bottle and not add anything to it. So we've got our stem there. And then I decided to do a fun little curly cue on this one, but I'm gonna have to save that stem and that leaf for last because if I add it on now, I can't, I can't change anything else here. So we wanna work on our background pumpkin first and then we'll work on our little short squatty one in the front. Do you ever add water to thin your paint out? Um, not in these types of paintings. So I do another technique. Um, you can go to my YouTube channel or my Facebook page and see this. Um, I do another technique that I love because I love doing pen and ink where I draw with like a Sharpie or a waterproof ink pen. And then we turn acrylics into watercolors. We treat them like watercolors by purposely adding a lot of water to it. Um, and it gives a watercolor finish to the painting. But if I, I'm doing this style of paint. Any of these that you see here behind me, I do not water down my paint. So now we're just coming in and this is to me the fun part. What colors do we want our pumpkins to look like? Notice how I'm going, I'm using the angled brush now. It's not quite as big as the flat, that, that tip on the angle allows you to kind of control things a little bit better. And I am just jumping back and forth in between colors. I'm not rinsing my brush in between. I'm just kind of playing and seeing what I like. And I want to kind of keep it darker next to those grooves just to give a little bit more shading there. Let me pull this one out a little bit more. And then I can come in. I'm going to load this up with white paint. Add those streaks in there. So typically I would just go ahead and, you know, you can pull this over to the edge right here. So even with my brown right now, I took a little bit of brown and navy together just to tone it down a little bit. So again, you can make these paintings, whatever color combinations you want. I'm just going to wipe off a little excess here. Jump over and see if you guys have any questions for me when I'm doing this. Um, Jen said, how do I deliver the class? What platform? So I teach on Facebook lives. You can just go to the social, social easel and follow me there. And um, then inside my memberships, I teach, oops, I teach um, in a private Facebook group. And when I'm doing that, I've got this camera over here and it is an overhead view. So like what I'm doing with you guys tonight, this is not how I teach in my memberships. Um, this is more to talk and interact with you guys and show you what I'm doing. Inside my membership, everything is from an aerial view where you're straight on top of the canvas and you can really, really see what I'm doing. And then um, once we add them to the Facebook group, um, then, my members have a membership portal um, through Kajabi and they log in there and they have over 70 videos they can choose from. They can watch 
whenever they want. So you don't ever have to catch me live. You can watch replays um, and fit it in, in your schedule. So if you add the medium to acrylics to make it thicker, would that be good for palette knife painting? Yes, that's a good question. Um, I do that a lot. I love palette knife painting. Um, and you definitely, you can either, you can do two things. Um, let's see if I have a bottle. Oh, here it is. So um, these are some of my favorite, um, they're academic level. So these are thicker, again, Artist Loft brand. Um, you can buy these, they're already thick. They're ready to go and they're great for palette knife painting. Or if you have your favorite colors in craft paint, you just add your gel medium to it. And the difference is, um, like I could show, let me grab a palette knife really quick. We'll just grab this one here. So when you do it with a palette knife, and again, I still do this all the time with just, um, without adding gel medium, but you see how drippy and runny that is? It's just gonna come right off. It's fine as long as you're close to your canvas or board and you're ready to scrape it on there. But sometimes you want things thicker or maybe to have more texture and a 3D effect off of your canvas, then I would add gel medium to that. And then it would make it nice and thick and it wouldn't drip off my palette knife like that. What do we think of the color of the pumpkin so far? We good? Beautiful. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more white. When you're all done with your paintings, do you leave them as is? Do you seal them before you send them to customers? So I actually don't, <laughs> I actually don't sell my originals. They're all in my house. I used to when I did um, local paint nights, but um, I really don't like shipping things at all. So um, I don't ship any of my originals. I usually just leave them as is. Um, I did this peacock just because I wanted to see what it would look like and I don't normally do this. I usually only put something on them if it's going to go outside or be in humidity or a bathroom or something like that and you're worried about it affecting the paint. I usually leave them just like that. On this one, you guys can see how shiny that is. I did a gloss varnish over that and it does protect the canvas as well. Um, it's just not something I typically do. So that one's gloss and I thought it would be really pretty because the peacock is so bright and bold. Um, and I like it on that one. Do you normally seal the wood ones? I don't. Same thing with both of them. So I'm going to jump down to this smaller pumpkin. And this one's going to kind of have more of like a mossy green look to it. Maybe a little bit of blue pulled in, but not a ton. And I don't know if you guys can see what little paint I'm using. Like I put way too much paint on my palette. You do not have to use a ton, especially if you're doing a painting this size. So I'm really going to load up the white. I want a pretty heavy white. And then just pull some green in there. And if I get too much, let me change my mind and add more white back to it. I may come back. So like looking at my original, I've got a little bit darker brown down here. So I'm going back with my black and brown. I'm just going to go back over this a little bit again. Hey, Christy, just so you know, we're at the yeah. 15 minute mark. 15 minutes. Okay. I, we are just about done. So I'm going to um, wrap up with the leaves and the stems. And then um, Parker, do you want to go ahead and have them start asking questions while I'm finishing up and we can switch to more business related? Uh, sure. <laughs> either way either way I can I can we can leave like 10 minutes at the end for just business questions uh, too, I can, whatever you I can think. start running through them I don't mind um while, while I'm thinking about you guys uh Michaels did launch their Michaels Pro program this past Sunday it is a bulk buying program you guys so you can actually get deep discounts on buying a lot of the same items and they have thousands of items in this program 
Uh, you guys can check it out at michaels.com slash michaels pro. Um, you, you can also get uh, tax exempt status for that as well. I saw a few people asking uh, if it was um, available in Canada and I don't know you guys, but um, potentially one of the Michaels staff might know if they're here. Uh, otherwise we can let you guys know. Um, it is unfortunately US only at this time. Uh, thank you, Rochelle. So only available in the US, you guys. Um, Christy, I'm just going to like rapid fire questions that I see. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any basic tips for someone who wants to start hosting online craft classes? Um, basic tips. So um, number one is build your audience. Um, if you um, don't have an audience yet, um, you need to, you know, build one, whether that be Instagram or Facebook, whatever your social media platform is. Um, and just, like I said, very basic equipment, an iPhone, a stand, a light. Um, you want to have good lighting when you're teaching people. Those are just some of the basics um, that you need to get started. So that's just some really quick tips um, and it's super basic. Um, and I think we do have, Parker, correct me if I'm wrong. I have a, um, a bonus that's like my five tips for getting people started um, yep. virtually online. How do they get access to that? Uh, if you guys go to makersbonus.com, that's makers with an S. Um, Christy threw in some tips. Damon has some tips from yesterday. And then all of our Q&A panel from tomorrow also put in a, a ton of stuff, you guys. And it's all free. Just head over to makersbonus.com for some more business related tips. And everything I kind of talked about today is in that, just like my quick, like how I went from physical to online. Christy, I might have said that uh, I was going to try to convince you to get like, what like top 10 things you need to start painting, like some type of list together. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I'm sure she has it somewhere. <laughs> so Chelsea asked- do that. Chelsea asks, what is the normal max in an online class? Um, I'm sure you're going to say it's unlimited, right? That's the whole point of being online. <laughs> okay. Yes, guys. This is the beauty of being online. And I want you to like understand like the potential this can have for you. My max class in a local class was 40. That was the space I had in the restaurant I was in. And 45 was like really like during Christmas parties, we were really cramming them in there because I hated turning people away. In the online world, there is no limit because me teaching you, just like I'm talking to you guys tonight, I'm not sure how many people are on here, but I'm teaching you all the same thing. It doesn't matter how many of you are on here. You're all learning the same steps. So it is truly limitless. I have a, a pretty generic question. Um, so I'll, ha I'll let you take this one however you will. Um, she's wondering about the business as aspect. Can you explain potentially some forms of revenue you have with your um, painting business? Maybe just to give people ideas. Uh, that's not yeah. the question she asked, but that's the direction I think she was going just for the sake okay. of answering. Um, yeah, so when I first started out, I started with, um, I love the membership model because um, it builds a community and it builds a relationship with those people that you're teaching. So that is the main way that I teach. Um, so my membership, my VIP membership is called the Inner Tribe. And inside that we have our private Facebook group where I teach them. They get three paintings per month with me. They get a guest speaker and I kind of bundle that all together and they get the same monthly content each month. Um, so of course there's people who may not want to do a monthly membership or maybe, you know, not at that price point. So I have the painting of the month club where they get like the truck painting that I showed earlier, um, for $20 a month and they get one painting with me. Um, and that is pre-recorded. So you can pre-record these sessions. You don't always have to go live. Um, you can pre-record them. You can sell them as bundles. Um, you can sell them as one-offs. So I have a whole store of just single tutorials. So if you're not ready for a membership and that sounds like a commitment, you can go to my store and just search all of the paintings that I've taught and you can just pick them and buy them by yourself. And it comes with a paint list, a video, template, all that stuff. So those are the ways that um, I make my money online through my business. And y'all just, just so you know, uh, Damon and I did the same thing. Um, live wasn't a huge 
part of our business for a long time. So what we did was we just recorded something. You record something once and you sell it hundreds and thousands of times. And it's, it's such a nice passive income for you. Yeah, there's nothing better than um, my friend Gretchen is here with me and she does my Facebook ads for me. Um, ad money set aside is very important in an online business too. Okay, so you want to spend money on ads. But um, my favorite emails and messages from her are like, hey, you just made this much in your store. And I'm like, that's awesome. I was doing this over here watching a movie with my kids while I was making money in my store. So that is the beauty of online and the beauty of videos and being able to repurpose your work. Uh, do you have any tips for um, building your community from when you switch from your um, in-person paint parties to going online? So when I switched, I only had 8,000 people. And that probably sounds like a lot if you're brand new, but I had built, that was six years of me teaching locally. All those people were from Missouri. Maybe a few, tw uh, you know, sprinkled in from other states that would drive to see me. But so my whole audience was local. I had to start from scratch as far as reaching out to the rest of the world. And it was, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it was intimidating at first. Like doing this with you, talking to a camera was really scary in the beginning, but you just do it and then you just keep doing it. And you just show up and you deliver to your audience, you give them content, um, you help them. Like, what are their needs? That's what I would ask you, like find out what your audience needs and then provide it. And the more you do that, and the more you show up on video and with solid content, the more followers you're gonna gain. And now we have over 55,000 followers on the page. And that's just two years. I've only been online for two years. I feel like this is a trap question, but I'm gonna ask you anyway, because <laughs> I know customer service is so, so, so important. Um, on in, in any business, not just online businesses, but have you ever had a paint party guest who was unhappy with their paintings and what did, how did you handle it? Um, do you mean like when I did in person? Uh, sure. So usually like if I had, you know, ladies that were upset towards the end of the class, you know, I could hear, you know, when you're in the front of the room, you can hear everything going on behind you. And I'd hear that they were unhappy. Um, so, I would go over to them and be like, Hey, what's going on? And you know, usually they're like, I'm frustrated. I don't like it. It doesn't look the way I want it to. And I'm like, can I help you? Like I always ask first and they're like, well, yeah, if you can make it look better. And I would physically like stand there and paint on their canvas if they wanted me to and correct them and just show them the brush strokes up close and personal and then hand the brush back to them and say, do you think you can do that? And then they're like, yeah. And then it fixed it and it's happy. So they're happy. You know, it's just taking the time with them to, to walk them through it and making sure that your customers are satisfied at the end. And it's the same thing inside my membership. If some of the women get done with paintings and they're not happy with them, they can ask for critique in the group. And then during some of my Q and A's or different things that I do, I can show those techniques again to help them better, you know, understand what they need help with. Awesome. Y'all, I'm, I'm trying to breeze through these questions as quick as possible, but y'all are like blowing us up. So um, I, I do want to mention that we'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. We're going to have the whole hour to just answer business questions. And we're going to have a whole panel of people with different backgrounds, different areas of expertise. So it seems like there's a ton of interest in business. Um, so definitely come back tomorrow. But y'all, I'm going to keep going with questions and just get through what I can. Um, and I'm pretty much done with the painting. So... You guys can kind of see the transition there and then we'll just, we'll just go strictly business questions now. Thanks, Christy. That looks really good, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> um, this, is, this is a really important one too. Um, how did you get over your fears and how long did it take you to realize and say to yourself that this actually works and this is a real business? Um, well, in my local paint party business, it, um, it kind of just blew up overnight. Um, and I was one of the first people to do that kind of thing here. Um, so I was very fortunate in that. In the online world, of course, you're intimidated because there's other artists out there doing what I'm doing and you're scared and you have self-doubt. I think it is very, very important that you surround yourself with the right people. That's, I cannot stress that enough. 
if you don't have a positive support system in your home or the friends that are around you and they're like, oh, what do you think, why do you think you can do that? Those are not the people you need to surround yourself with. I have an amazing support system of girlfriends who are also in business with me, a support system of girlfriends that are my local friends that have supported me. Surround yourself with those people who love you and build you up because we all have self-doubt. You guys may look at me now and think I don't, but I do. This was scary tonight. And you, you have your friends who surround you and lift you up. Um, so important to have that coaching. What are you reading and what are you putting into your head? Because that's what's going to come out. So Christy, how many texts do you think you sent me in the last two days? Oh, I don't know. This call. <laughs> I'm probably like 15, 20. I don't know. Maybe it was more than that. Hey, Christy, one, one thing while I ask the next one, can you show the close-up of the, uh, the painting you just did? Yes. Thank you. Y'all, I want to add one more thing while she shows that. Um, I think mindset is a huge part of running your, running your own business, running a business in general. And one thing that Damon and I tell our students all of the time, um, if you don't treat your business like a business, no one else will. So you yep. have to be in that mindset that, this is real, I'm doing this, and this is how it is. And as soon as you make that mind shift, mind, mindset shift, everyone else does too. You just have to treat it like a business. You really do, and it's, you know, and I know Parker and I feel the same on this. If you're stuck in a headspace that's not healthy for you, like I'm very open and honest about my journey and struggling with depression and anxiety and all those things, go to therapy, go, like, I, don't be scared to go to a therapist and get counseling. If you need help getting past those mindset issues that hold you back, because once you break through them and once, like for me, once I gave it up to God and stopped trying to control it and realized he is in control of everything in my life, he's in control of giving me this opportunity that I have with you guys right now. When I start thinking of it that way, that takes pressure off me. It's not up to me. I had no idea ever. You guys think when I was in graphic design school, finishing with three kids and trying to start a paint party business that I ever thought I would be where I am right now, that was not my plan. That was his. And you just have to trust the talents he's given you and stop trying to run away from them. I was trying to run away from them. They scared me. And once I embraced it and realized this is what God meant for me, that changes the way that you look at things or it did for me anyways. Y'all that kind of marks the end of the, the eight o'clock. Um, I, so Rochelle did say he'd go over longer to answer the questions that we have. Oh, sweet. Okay. Um, cool. I'm trying to answer as many as I can in the Q and a, but some of them are very paint specific and I can't. Yeah. That's not, that's not my little house, Christy. <laughs> Like, how do you care for paintbrushes? Throw them away. I don't know. Okay. So real quick, I'll try to make these short and sweet so we can get through more paintbrushes. My favorite is Masters. I can't even remember the whole name. If you look at, um, you can go to my Amazon store. It's on my website also. And I have all my favorite supplies in there, but it's Masters brush and it's a hard wax um, that you suds up. It's really good for your brushes. It conditions them. It washes them really good. And you want to lay them flat to dry. So make sure you do that. Do you use texture paste on canvases? Um, typically I don't. However, that is going to be something I'm always, I believe like as an artist, you should always be growing and trying new things and doing new stuff. So that is actually something that I intend on doing over the next few months and start introducing some screen painting and some different techniques where using texture paste and that kind of stuff will come into it. Um, one person, I, I miss, I've lost the question, but I just remember, um, <laughs> y'all, I was not ready for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, they're, they're questioning about the membership and how do you collect payments and how do you manage the people in and out of the Facebook group? Um, I mean, go ahead, Chrissy, you can just answer. <laughs> yeah, so um, there are several different ways that you can, um, you can go through PayPal. I'm honestly sorry, not going to recommend that for subscriptions. You can. Um, I use Stripe 
Um, but there are, you can look up how to take subscription payments um, and try to, you know, figure that out. I personally use Kajabi and it runs my entire membership for me. And it's where I store all of my um, classes as well. As far as the Facebook group, um, in the beginning, I did it all by myself. So people had to, when they requested to join the Facebook group, I had them provide their email address that they purchased the membership with, and then I would verify that and then add them to the Facebook group. As I got larger, um, I now have a community manager, Tiffany, who does that for me. So she's in charge of the entire group and, you know, taking care of the in and out and the, and the basics of that. As, as far as the, the members of your, your class, do you send them a material list and let them go shop or it's, it's all online. So like, what do, how do, how would they know what to, to expect? So, yeah, um, I give them a calendar at the beginning of every month um, for the inner tribe um, and just show them the paintings we're doing. Um, we've added a new thing where they actually won't know ahead of time. They get to create a painting with me and that's so I can help them become a better artist and learn the process of creating your own art. But with every painting, they get a color list. So they know exactly what colors I use. And then once you're in the membership, most of these ladies, they have all these colors. It's just a bunch of craft paint. <laughs> you need a good set of brushes, some canvases, a mixed media pad, and some craft paint. But I do tell them the specific colors that they need. Sorry, um, I'm, I'm gonna answer to... Barb's yeah, go, really go quick. She said, is, is there a difference between artist paint and craft paint? There is, it's just a thickness the vis viscosity of the paint. So the artist academic level grade is thicker than um, craft paint. Some of them have different finishes. Most of them dry matte though. Do you wanna uh, plug your Facebook name when one person was asking really quick? Uh, yeah, so you can find me at the Social Easel on everything. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Um, you can see everything I do. You find out more information about my memberships. The Inner Tribe is closed um, right now. I only open that to new members a few times a year, but we do have the Painting of the Month Club, which is always open. And right now we're painting, um, I'm just gonna show you, there's two versions. This is the truck full of pumpkins. And so I teach you, there's videos in your library ready for you, um, or will be ready for you on September 1st. And I teach you step-by-step -step how to do this. Um, so there's those two options, or again, you can buy single tutorials if you just want to try some things out, but I'm on all social media as the social easel. Christy, do you always have an example of the final painting for your students while you're demonstrating? I have, um, I have up until this last month, we started changing things. So um, I did sea animals this last month in my group, and I knew I wanted to do a jellyfish for my third painting, but I did not have time. To, with vacations and whatnot, I didn't have time to get that painting done ahead of time. And I told the ladies, I decided instead of giving you a finished painting first, I'm gonna walk you through the process. And it ended up being one of their favorite tutorials of the month and something that they wanted me to keep doing because it really helped them learn how I build a composition of a painting. So now they get two finished paintings, pictures of exactly what they're gonna paint. And then that third painting is going to be um, me creating with them. So this month I'm teaching them how to paint from a still life, how to create a still life and how to turn that into a painting. Raina, do you mind uh, saying where they can watch the replay? Um, I can't remember the link off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, not a problem. So all of the classes are, all of our classes are recorded, including tonight's class. And you can find um, all of those class recordings at www.michaels.com um, slash classes. And it'll, like I said, and tonight's uh, class will be available in 24 hours. Thank you. Awesome. Um, someone said, or are we going to do the time lapse at the end? Oh, I can show you guys that. Um, I'm all, I'll be posting this on my Facebook page. We can, um, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. <laughs> Let's see if there's any other questions. Oh yeah, it actually came out really well. So again, this is super simple. You do not have to be a techie to know how to do this. It's literally just a button on your camera, on your iPhone, or I don't know what Samsung's do. I only have iPhone, <laughs> so. But that's how easy it is. And then you just got a fun little video of the, the art that you just created. 
And I should mention you guys, social media is loving time lapse over the last yes. like six months to a year. Like it's super duper popular. Um, yeah. So someone, someone's trying to decide between uh, selling their physical paintings or doing online classes. Do you have any, uh, I, I already know your answer, but what, what is your thoughts on that? 100% online. Here's the thing. You can only, you have to get in the mindset of moving into the online world of you're no longer getting paid for your time. Your time is exponential. Like it's just multiplied times. Like I don't even know. Let's just say like I have 1300 members. So me teaching something one time, teaching a painting one time or making a painting one time and selling it for anywhere. For, I don't know what you charge for your paintings, but let's say you even charge a thousand dollars, but like multiply that times what you can do in the online world. And then it just keeps going. So one, one thing I like to think is like one to one versus one to many. Yes. If you sell a product, that's one thing to one person. If you sell knowledge or training or anything mm -hmm. online, really, it's one to many. And you basically duplicate yourself that whole time, just like you said. It's crazy. Right. And even digital prints. Like if people are saying, well, yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, that's on my plan. Damon knows that's on my plan for the next year is to sell all of my paintings on digital prints that you guys can purchase. Put them on phone cases, canvas prints, all those things that I can take from one painting that I did and turn it into multiple streams of revenue. We've already been talking behind your back in the chat about how I'm gonna get your husband to send me the small sign so I can put it on a wreath. <laughs> oh wait, which one? The small one, the small one that you painted today, pumpkins. Oh yeah, he can send that to you. <laughs> They're like, she doesn't ship. I'm like, I know Corey. Yeah, Corey will take care of it. You know I'm not going to, it'll sit in my office for three more weeks. You can have it. Uh, they're well, asking how do you know to like, absolutely. How do you know how to price your online classes or your live classes? Um, you know, I think it was just a learning curve. When I first got started, I looked at what I charged at in-person events and wanted to keep it comparable to that. But I, I did it a little less because I'm not providing the supplies. So, you know, um, an online class with me, or, um, sorry, I put this on do not disturb and it just still disturbed me. Someone was trying to call me. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Pricing. Okay. So a paint night with me was $40 per person. Um, so I knew I wanted to charge, you know, not quite that much for an individual tutorial, a little bit less. And then my membership is like the greatest value because you can, you can charge less than that and give them more because of the membership model. But yeah, I don't really have a concrete answer on that for you. For your online classes, do you send all of your attendees like a materials list before the class to make sure that they're ready to go and have everything they need? No. Um, in fact, in the beginning, I tried to make sure I did that. And like I said, I don't want people to feel that like to me that's not what art and creating is about is about like that type a personality that you have to know exactly everything that christy used or you can't do it i actually would rather my students paint with me and watch me go through the process and then go watch the replay and actually paint and get their supplies and do that i think that they learn better that way So one of the things that uh, someone asked uh, quite a few times, like, how do you get people to start following you online? And I want to give people a really good example. So all of the questions that people are asking tonight are questions that me and Parker and the Michaels team and Christy should be banking in the back of our minds of this is the content our people are asking questions about. So, you know, how to do the paint classes. That's something that Christy should be thinking, okay, should I start answering that question on my Facebook lives? And it's the same thing with if you were asking certain paint techniques or wreath techniques. If the same person asks it more than three or four times, then that's worth us going create content about that to start attracting more people who have that question. Yeah, definitely. And that is, I even use that like in, um, 
you know, like in my memberships and like what I paint, like I ask my audience all the time for feedback. Like, what are your questions? Where are you struggling? What do you want to see next? What do you want to see? And like, we re are reactive to that. That's our job as coaches, as teachers, is to, again, provide you guys the content that you're asking for. Someone, Someone asked if I did hand lettering too. Sorry, um, I yeah. do. I do hand lettering also. And then we do have some lessons on that inside of the group. Do you want to talk a little bit about the um, caveats of uh, copying someone else's artwork or selling someone else's artwork. So people are asking a lot of questions like, if I learn this painting from you, can I teach it to someone else? If I learn this painting from you, can I sell it? So um, yes, this is something that um, has, you know, come up a lot lately because of COVID and things switching from paint parties locally to online. So um, and again, this is why I'm, I'm adding that extra thing into my membership, changing my content to match what the need is. People are struggling coming up with their own ideas and they don't understand how to create their own content. Um, and again, my job as your coach and your teacher is to help you figure that out. And so I give the inside tips. I show them how I do it because here's the thing. And I, you know, I'd mentioned this earlier when I was talking about getting inspiration from Pinterest, be inspired, do not copy. You do not have the right to take my peacock painting, you know, my trek painting and turn around and make your own version of it and then teach it online. That's stealing someone's art. Okay. Um, that's copyrighted. It's owned by the social easel. It's owned by me. Now on the flip side of that inside my membership, um, either one of them painting of the month club or my inner tribe paying members are allowed to teach my paintings at local paint parties because that does not affect me in any way whatsoever. But can you see the difference between the two worlds? People are teaching, it's actually really cool. I mean, my truck has been taught all over the United States to different people and that doesn't affect me and I'm happy to help them out and give them that, that they can teach to local people. But if I allowed people to teach my designs online, you know, there'd be hundreds of me teaching my paintings and that doesn't make sense. So as an artist, you protect your work um, and my job is to help you figure out how to create your own work and giving you tips on doing that. So I also want to give Christy a shout out y'all. She actually changed her flight for her vacation to be here tonight <laughs> to paint with y'all. Yes, I did. <laughs> but totally worth it. I had so much fun with you guys. But yes, Thank tomorrow you, Christy, I'm on behalf of Michael, we, we appreciate you. No, no problem. I'm obviously super happy to do it. And I've got my friend Gretchen here with me. And tomorrow morning, we're hopping on our plane and we're headed to the beach to be with the rest of our girlfriends. <laughs> so we have something to celebrate. Take us with you. <laughs> you guys, I just wanted to say uh, thank you guys one more time. And um, thank you to Michaels. Thank you to the, the, t the support team, Raina, Tyler. Thank you guys. Uh, y'all, if y'all are still interested in some business stuff, we will be back tomorrow, um, 7 p.m. Central. Make sure you guys sign up on the Michaels, uh, Michaels page, just like you sign up for this one. Um, thank you, Christy, of course, for being here and, and sharing some of your knowledge and your, your business tips. Um, Damon, you have anything you wanted to add? I don't. Thank you, Christy. Yeah, thank you guys. It was so much fun. And I, if you want, I, I want to say this really quick. If you want to do this painting, if you did this painting with me and you want me to see it, um, we have a free Facebook group where we are going to make a post that says, did you paint the Buffalo plaid pumpkins? And you guys can come into my free Facebook group and share what you created at home. So if you want to show it off and you want the social easel to see it um, and all the other uh, ladies that follow, that's how you're going to be able to do that. So just request to join our free Facebook group so you can show off your work. And then make sure if you post it online that you use the hashtag make it with Michaels so the Michaels team can see it as well. Yes, yes, that's awesome. All right, you guys. Well, I think that's about all yeah. we've got. Um, one last time, if you guys wanted any of Christie's painting tips, any of Damon's Etsy tips, I have some create quality content tips in there. All of that stuff can be found at makersbonus.com. I don't need, I don't need the panelists for you. Thank you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Parker. All right, you guys. Y'all have a good night. Thank you guys so Thank much for coming you. and participating. Bye.